In this video, we're going to revisit the initial statement of our 1D conduction through a wall problem. We're going to expand it now so that we can create the unsteady formulation and look at the development of a temperature profile. So let's return to applying the DIVA process. So if you recall, the DIVA process involves developing the finite element formulation, followed by implementing it in code, verifying it, and then doing some analysis. Within this problem statement, what we had was a client who wants to be comfortable year-round. A fine goal, but this is an infrared image of his house. In the language of the building community, his building envelope is very lossy. He's losing a great deal of energy through his walls and windows. So how do we help him? Instinctively, we know we do this by adding more insulation. But the question is, when we add more insulation, which insulation should we use? How much? And even more to the point, because there are a range of insulations you can use, all set out by our value, but how do you figure out the cost versus our value benefit? That's a large number of computations that you would have to do. You'd have to consider all the insulation types, all the various combinations, the costs, and what he's paying for his heating. We are going to start this process by doing it computationally and simulating what the temperature profile looks like in his house using different materials. So we started this analysis, a first pass that was a very in initial basic analysis. We said that the problem was one dimensional. We looked at the steady state solution. We considered simple conduction, no other forms of heat transfer. And we considered the wall to be a single material with constant properties. We were given the boundary conditions type 1 boundary conditions, or Dirichlet, we were giving the inside and outside temperatures. What this allowed us to do was to build a first approximation. We built a code, and we could verify it against an exact solution. And this is why this first approximation was so valuable. We know that the code gives us the correct answer because we can compare it to something that we can do analytically by hand. The next approximation was the piece that was done for homework, where we said, we know that realistically, walls are comprised of more than one material. We chose four different materials for which we could get our thermal conductivity values, but we could go out onto the internet and pull up these values. So we could, in theory, extend our wall from the four types of materials we used to many more. Now let's consider the unsteady case. We want to watch the temperature profile as it's developing. So the rest of this video develops the continuous and discrete finite element formulation of the spatial terms. We've done this already. It is what we did for both the 1D conduction problem of the single material and then again for the multi-material. In the next videos, we'll take a deep dive into how you go through and derive the full finite element formulation for the unsteady, and in particular, the temporal side of the equation. And then there'll be a separate video describing the implementation details. So let's look at the physical system. In this case, we have just temperature. So we have partial of, of temperature with respect to time is equal to the partial with respect to x of d, the diffusivity, times the partial of t with respect to x. The diffusivity here includes the material properties that would normally be in front of the partial temperature, partial time term. So we know how to approach this. The first thing we do is we determine what the residual is. We approximate with t hat and form the residual. Next, we form the weighted residual. And after the forming the weighted residual, we integrate the second order term by parts to lower the order of the system and include the natural boundary conditions. The result is an equation that looks very familiar to us. We know how to treat the spatial terms. You've already done that. We approximate t hat by saying that t is going to equal j from 1 to the number of nodes, 
tj times nj, where tj is a coefficient, and nj are basis functions that we will select. And we'll use linear Lagrange polynomials. Furthermore, we'll select the weight functions to be the same as the basis functions, which are the Lagrange polynomials, and then we'll get the weighted residual formulation. So we know how to do that, but how do we handle the temporal term? That's the subject for the next video.